But there's another whole set of characters in this story. There's, there's the older son also. And there's the father. So I thought, you know, if Jesus, because Jesus was so adaptable, he, many of the parables Jesus told were retelling of stories that the rabbis had already told the people. They know, knew a lot of Jesus' stories. But what was always unusual about the stories that Jesus told, when he retold, often told stories, he always ended them differently. If you look at the parables, they're so full of grace. And there's, he always put a twitch of grace at the end rather than the law that the, uh, that the rabbis would give. And when Jesus went into a particular setting, he just used what was around him to give examples. So if he walked in today into this room, I and see and I saw all of us as women sitting here, I don't think that he would tell the prodigal son story. I think he would tell the prodigal daughter story. But I think it's a lot more than a prodigal daughter story. I think it's a prodigal family. Because the word prodigal means lavish, extravagant. There's negative connotations to the word, but there's also positive uh, uh, nuances in that word. And when you look at it that way, all the characters in this story had extravagant, extravagant and lavish responses. So if we could, let's tell that story as the story of the prodigal family. Why don't I just stay down here and then you guys can be up here. Is that okay? There was once a man who owned a lot of property about 35 miles southwest of a very large city. He had two daughters. The oldest one was responsible and diligent. His second daughter was impetuous and headstrong. One day the youngest daughter thought to herself, He's so healthy, I'm never going to get my inheritance so that I can get out of here. I don't like this place. It's too restricting. I can't do what I want to here. So she went to her dad and demanded her share of the inheritance, which she would one day surely receive. And of course, her father said no, but she persisted. Oh, please, please, Daddy. She sweet-talked. Nagged, pouted, had tantrums until one day, just because the fight was completely out of him, he said, okay, she could have her inheritance. But it wasn't quite as easy as that. It wasn't a matter of going to the bank and withdrawing a check. The man was land rich, but he didn't have a lot of cash on hand. So he told his daughter, I'll give you the deed to, to part of the land, which is yours, but you're going to have to sell it. So she went into her small town. I'm selling my half of the property, that's mine. Is anyone interested? Now the town folk were in a little bit of a dilemma. They were embarrassed because they knew they had the opportunity to make a great deal. They knew they could subdivide the land, build houses on it, and make a lot of money. But they also felt sorry for her father after all, they'd known him forever. They'd grown up together. And in the end, though, they made the deals, and she got the money, lots of money. And she took the money and ran. Well, not exactly ran. She drove off in her brand new red Porsche convertible, her long black hair flying in the wind. And in the rear view mirror, she thought she saw her dad standing in the middle of the road. Finally, I'm free of my daddy's house. I'm free of my daddy's rules. 
And I don't have to deal with my stodgy older sister who does everything right. She got to the city and loved it. She had so much money, she didn't have to think about how she was going to spend it. She bought a condo that overlooked the ocean. She bought her clothes in expensive boutiques. She had her hair straightened and colored by Jorge, who did all the celebrities. She had her nails done to match the outfits she wore. Everybody who was anybody got to know her. Ooh, I'm loving it here. I'm invited to every party. Everybody loves me, and I love them. She bought her new friends gifts and expensive dinners. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll pick up the check. That was her favorite line. She was at the top of her game, and she was having fun. Now back home, people occasionally heard about what she was up to in the city, and according to them, none of it was good. They clucked their tongues together. They looked at her dad and saw how old he had gotten in the few months since she left. They'd say things like, Oh, you can see the grief in his face. He's so sad. Good thing he has his older daughter at home. She's such a good girl. She must be such a comfort to him. And then they'd go home, and in the privacy of their own living room, they'd thank God for his faithfulness to them. They'd pray for the youngest daughter, and thank God that their kids were pretty good and that their families were so stable. If they met the father, they'd tell him they were praying for him in that tone of voice that said, glad it's you and not me. <laughs> he didn't say much, and after a while, they just left him alone. They didn't know what to say to him. It was just too awkward. Things continued for the younger daughter in the city. One day, after many months, she went to withdraw some money from the ATM machine and it was informed that she had insufficient funds. She marched into the bank and demanded to see the manager. Could you please tell me what you people are doing here? Who's minding the store? Look! Well, the bank manager showed her the numbers and they didn't look good. As a matter of fact, she realized she wouldn't even have enough to pay next month's mortgage on her condo. She panicked. The next morning, she put an ad in the paper and sold her car. She took quite a hit on that, but at least it bought her a little bit more time. Her friends still begged to go out with them, and um, they always went out, and she, they were usually short of cash, and they promised to pay her back, but somehow they never quite got around to doing that. And after a few months, she found herself low on money again. Credit card companies began calling her so much she didn't answer the phone. The mortgage company sent out some threatening letters and one day some pretty intimidating men came to the door and told her that they would stand by as she removed her things. The condo was no longer hers. Well, what can you take when you don't have a car? She called her friends, but they didn't return her calls and she was all alone. To make a long story short, that night she slept in a shelter. Some nights she stayed under a viaduct. She was homeless. Everyone had abandoned her. She had no place to go. The day she found herself eating a half-eaten Burger King hamburger in the garbage for lunch was the day she began thinking about her father. What have I done? I had it so good in my father's house. I'm going to go home and admit to my dad how I messed up and ask if I can come home and work on his land. I won't ask to come back as his daughter. That wouldn't be fair. But I know I'd be much better off as one of my father's laborers than I am here. That way, I won't be eating the food that rightfully belongs to my sister or enjoying the privileges of a daughter. I know I embarrassed my father in front of the whole town by leaving the way I did and squandering his money. So I'll just have to face that. So she went home. She hitchhiked part of the way and walked the last part. It was before breakfast and the town was just waking up. People were leaving to go to their jobs. The coffee shop was filling with men who wanted their two donuts and a cup of coffee. Moms were walking their dogs.